uh, good evening today's lesson is for class 8 we will be discussing the poem warned from your English course book uh, so as you can see this uh, poem is written by Sylvia Stultz uh, she is a poet who lived in Michigan and most of her poems are related to environment and nature uh, she is more concerned about the well-being of nature so uh, this particular poem has been categorized as an eco poem because it is about the environment uh, this poem contains uh, five paragraphs each paragraph containing four lines and uh, uh, two consecutive lines have same rhyme scheme like uh, so it's you can say uh, each paragraph contains of two couplets uh, the rhyme scheme is a a b b so let us now discuss each paragraph separately the sands of time have rendered fear so it tells that as the time has passed it has brewed fear in the atmosphere why are we scared because earth is going towards devastation it is becoming worse every day blue skies on high no longer clear we cannot see the blue skies as clearly as we used to see before in earlier days the stars were bright whence they came now dimmed obscured pollution's haze so the stars the poet claims that the stars used to be brighter when they started glowing first but uh, over time they have dimmed their glow has dimmed why because there is a layer of pollution covers the earth which stops the brightness of the stars to come through okay in the first paragraph uh, introduces us to the problem she has in mind though we are all aware of it uh, she stresses on the pollution which is uh, going to spoil earth sooner or later in the next paragraph uh, she describes the beauty of earth which used to be before crystal clear our waters gleamed fish abundant rivers streamed ocean floors sandy white now littered brown pollution blight. okay so uh, she says that the waters used to be crystal clear the word gleamed means shone brightly they were shining the water was shining brightly uh, showing how how clean it was fish abundant rivers streamed the rivers had plenty of fish in it we all know how pollution affects uh, fishes so many of the species are dying because of the uh, harmful chemicals that uh, we put in the water the factories factory effluents and all the ocean floors sandy white now littered brown pollution's blight I did not describe this part because we have all seen how the seas have become dirty you can go to any sea coast now and you can see how the beaches are littered with garbage here the word plight means a very sad condition it's uh, an effect brought about by excessive pollution in this third paragraph again the poet describes the condition that prevailed pre previously trees towered high above trunks bearing professed love birds chirping from sights unseen gone paper joined pollution's team so the poet says previously the trees used to be we used to have tall trees which were almost enormous it was difficult to see what is on the top they were so high the trunks bearing professed love so uh, the trunks of the trees uh, this line may mean uh, two things that uh, we used to lovingly grow trees hence the they were long huge smooth trunks 
The second meaning is lovers used to carve their names on the trunk of the trees to keep a proof of their love. You must have seen in many of the parks they still do that. So the tree trunks bore, they contained that uh, sign of love for a long, long time. Uh, but what's uh, and uh, birds from sites and chirping from sites unseen. There were birds. There were lots of birds. The wildlife thrived in such such an uh, environment. There were loads of birds of every kind, and they built their nests on the trees, and they chirped sweetly from there. It shows that that the ecology previously uh, used to support a lot of wildlife which now has become impossible with the growth of pollution uh, so uh, at in the last line of the third paragraph the poet laments that it's all gone most of the huge trees are cut down to meet the need the growing need of paper we need a lot of paper nowadays hence and which in turn uh, we waste and uh, it joins the team of pollution so it only goes on to increase pollution also cutting down of trees gives rise to pollution as we all know from our science lessons the fourth paragraph says i can't blame pollution alone as they say you reap what you have sown so let plant let's let us plant a better seed tear out the old roots cultivate weed Okay, so uh, the poet again says that we cannot blame pollution as such. We are the ones who are to blame. Men, we human beings have caused all this pollution. You cannot blame pollution as a, uh, as a third mighty being who has come from outer world. No, it is us who are responsible for, the, for this mess. And we now are harvesting the bad crop that we have sown so this particular line it has a metaphor you reap what you have sown so we have sown the seed of pollution and now we are getting the result so here uh, pollution is uh, reaping is the uh, crop is the metaphor it means pollution so uh, reaping is the metaphor here Actually, you never reap pollution. It is like uh, the crop of pollution that you have reaped and now you are sowing its results. So let us plant a better seed. The poet calls upon the entire humanity to grow a better seed, to plant a better seed. That means to improve, to uh, rebuild, uh, to amend our bad ways and uh, do what is good for earth and stop pollution of every kind tear out old roots we should get rid of our old bad habits we should cultivate good habits and we should weed weed means to take out the plants that are not needed in garden uh, you have, have you must have seen a gardener de-weeding the garden taking out the bad plants that have grown amongst good plants so that is weeding so the uh, poet is urging us to take out the bad plants from its roots and plant good ones. That means to get rid of our bad habits and cultivate good ones. Protect what has been given for free. Uh, so in the last paragraph, the poet asks us to protect uh, the earth which we have received as a free, uh, as uh, which we have received free. We didn't have to pay for the environment that we live in. Our waters, skies, wildlife, trees. For once they are gone, don't you say, consider yourself warned of that fatal day. So the poet is asking us or urging us to take action right now, to stop pollution right now or else we will have to pay a bigger price in future and then we would have only ourselves to blame. So that is more or less the uh, uh, description of the poem. Uh, let us just go through the questions that have been posed. 
Okay. It's clear. The first uh, questions that are given are short answer questions. What does the poet mean by sands of time? So, uh, what I feel is sands of time means the uh, enormous time that has passed, the amount of time that has passed since the inception of Earth. Since the time uh, Earth was created and human beings came to existence, so it says it's rather evolution of time or passage of time. It generally means passage of time. Where would birds chirp from? So as we have seen in the uh, third paragraph, the birds are chirping from the top of the trees. So here the poet is describing how in earlier days we had huge trees which supported the ecological the ecology and uh, uh, and it supported a lot of wildlife and there were lots of species of birds which used to build their nests high up in the trees. Question number three, what does the poet ask us to plant? The poet asks us to plant a better seed. This better seed is a metaphor. It means to grow better habits, to get rid of old bad habits of creating pollution, uh, doing harmful things for the ecosystem and amend our ways. This is what the poet means by uh, planting a better seed. Okay, now section B, uh, you have to answer it 30, in 30 to 40 words. Name two things that the poet fears. So what are the things that the poet fears here? The poet fears here that uh, uh, the way you are, we are leading life nowadays uh, without caring for the ecological system, soon we would spoil the whole earth. We, we are leading it to destruction and uh, by creating a lot of pollution. So, uh, in course of time, we would have no trees, no water, no uh, clean air to breathe. That is what the poet is afraid of. What has happened to the crystal clear water of the ocean? Uh, we all know about the pollution that has been created in the, that we have created in the ocean. Most of our garbages are dumped into the ocean beds which uh, pollutes the ocean and it destroys marine life. You can describe a lot about it, but keep it within 30 to 40 words. What action should we take up now? So the poet urges us to take note of the current situation of pollution and where it is leading us to and amend our ways. Try to make amends of whatever harm we have done to the earth so that we can reduce pollution and build a better tomorrow for the entire humanity. Okay, uh, that's uh, number C. So you have to answer this in 80 to 100 words, so this is rather long, and you have to write a paragraph about this. How does the poet bring out the truth of the proverb, you reap what you sow? Uh, give examples to support your answer. This uh, is very much subjective, so uh, you have to give your opinion. Uh, basically, it means uh, that you have to you get results uh, as uh, as uh, as per the work you have done. So, whatever if you have given your good efforts, you have put uh, diligent efforts, you would get good results. If you have done some harm, if you have caused some harm, you'll definitely get the uh, ba bad effect of that. Uh, so you can give example of the pollution that we have created 
initially we were so busy with our with our inventions we went on inventing the human human beings went on inventing one thing after the other uh, we, uh, but in the process we uh, of making our work easy we ended up creating a lot of harmful things say plastic for example which is choking our mother earth then paper of course it was needed for printing and uh, the various usages that we put them into but we ended up cutting a lot of trees in the process so we have to find out an alternative way of reducing this pollution so now that we have cut down the trees we have used plastic we have built up factories and uh, produced new things for our benefit uh, but we never cared how it might affect earth but presently we can see the effect of all this the air is polluted it is filled with poisonous gases many places it's difficult to breathe at times due to the pollution created by car emissions the factories are uh, putting all their wastes wastes down the water bodies which is killing the marine life and also the agricultural land the manures and uh, the pesticides we are putting is again polluting the water bodies and killing the fishes so you can go on on this topic but uh, try to keep it on within 8200 words and the next question the poet implies that we do not respect uh, nature or its gifts to us do you agree justify your answer uh, so here also it's the same thing uh, only from a different point of view so here you have to first uh, elaborate the various gifts that we have received from nature and we uh, think it is freely available to us so we tend to exploit it any way we want to what happens when you get something for free you do not know its value hence you tend to use it any way you want you tend to exploit it you put use it badly but the time has come for us to realize that these gifts that we have received from nature are precious they won't last if we go on using them the way we are today hence we must uh, realize that these are precious and use them sparingly and reverently so that we don't end up destroying the gifts itself uh, so you have to justify your answer like that and also uh, give examples of pollution again the trees the uh, wildlife uh, the beautiful nature the beautiful sceneries that we have received we do not value them as these are freely available everywhere but since they are slowly deplete, getting depleted they are reducing every day due to our actions so it's time that we realize that and stop misusing them okay so that's about c these are basically ideas you have to build up your answers on these um, let's go over to uh, d the refer to the context questions trees towered high above trunks bearing professed love uh, birds chirping from sights unseen, gone, paper joint, pollution steam. What does the poet mean by bearing profess, professed love? This I have explained while discussing uh, the paragraph. Uh, so here it means that the trunks of the trees were so, are so smooth and beautiful and long. It shows that it has been lovingly grown by mother nature. But... Uh, it also has a second meaning which means that lovers carve their names lovingly on the tree trunks which the tree preserves for ages. So the tree here is a symbol of love either lovingly grown by mother nature or it contains the proof of love of two human beings. Both the meanings can be uh, describe question number B what do you understand by the last two lines of the extract uh, birds chirping from the sights unseen this particular line uh, shows that uh, the trees used to support 
a lot of birds, lot of species of birds, and they used to build their nests high up because the trees were very, they were very big trees. So they supported a lot of birds. The birds found their homes there. So uh, they nurtured uh, the trees, nurtured the little, uh, uh, the uh, the little birds, uh, to, and it supported their species. Gone, paper joint pollution steam. So here, gone refers to the entire scenario. The beautiful tall trees and the wonderful birds all are gone. Now we can understand uh, how the many species of birds are being. Uh, completely uh, extinct nowadays because uh, the growing mobile network, the telephone networking uh, networks and uh, uh, the pollution, they're killing and also the global warming is killing many species of birds which is a direct result of our uh, uh, scientific evolutions. You can say so it's a human meddling with the ecological system that is killing the entire thing also the big trees are being cut down uh, for paper for making paper uh, which again is giving rise to a lot of pollution either uh, because the trees uh, which support the ecosystem are being cut down hence less of oxygen less rainfall we all know the reasons and also uh, since we are creating more paper, we are wasting more paper and these again are added to the causes of pollution. Okay, what picture uh, comes to your mind on reading these lines? Uh, so, while reading the first two lines, I feel uh, I, could, uh, I can visualize uh, a beautiful uh, forest path with uh, tall trees and birds chirping it's green everywhere uh, so that's a very pleasant picture which uh, the poet evokes in a reader's mind however in the last line uh, sh she brings down the entire canvas this canvas is completely torn and shattered due to the uh, pollution created by human beings the entire scene of greenery the peace the calm everything is shattered and uh, turned into a grey field of ashes. That is the kind of image it brings in one's mind. Okay, let us go over to question two. Protect what has been given for free. Our waters, skies, wildlife and trees. For once they are gone, don't you say, consider yourself warned of that fatal day. So what is free? Question number A. Of course, all the natural resources are available free to us. We have received it in abundance as a heritage we didn't have to pay a price for it it is it was available to us from birth and we used this used all this as our birthright never thinking that we might be exploiting it and they might come to an end someday b what does the poet mean by the fatal day well, fatal need not be described to you at the present moment. As you can see, the pollution has engulfed the entire world. And there are cities in India itself where uh, there are seasons where when you cannot go out of your house because the air becomes too poisonous to breathe. So here the fatal day indicates towards uh, the day when human beings uh, it will be difficult for human beings to sustain life on earth. There won't be any air to breathe. The water will be polluted. No trees to create oxygen. So it means the end of the world. Almost. We are, the way we are working towards uh, depleting the rest, natural resources, we would soon bring it to its end. So the poet is indicating towards that day when the world comes to an end okay do you think the poet uh, being is being unnecessarily anxious why why not so this is completely subjective question again this is uh, you have to give your opinion uh, so uh, I as for if you ask me I do feel the poet has a point there 
she is not unnecessarily anxious that things are indeed so bad that we must take heed and take action stop pollution uh, everywhere we are, and of course we the revolution has uh, turned has been set into motion people are getting aware every day that we have to stop this thing going on this uh, pollution that is going on we are creating awareness against usage of plastic and all that and try to use as far as possible uh, natural things and do not use synthetic uh, material these all awareness is there so uh, the poet is not unnecessarily anxious uh, a drastic step needs to be taken awareness is there but it has to be taken on a wider scale uh, awareness must be created and must be spread to a wider group of people the awareness that we are talking about here is mostly among the educated mass the uneducated people are yet to learn that they are inadvertently creating a lot of harm to the world so uh, i think poet uh, the poet has a definite has a reason to be anxious and it is high time we took heed of her words so that's all about the discussion uh, about the poem please read it again and uh, uh, read uh, hear the discussion uh, at your leisure pausing the video wherever you can and attempt the questions and do let me know whether this video has been helpful one